G Herbo is one of the most respected rappers to make it out of Chicago. But before rap, Herb was also active in the streets and had beef with another Chirac Savage, KTS Dre, who was shot 64 times outside of Cook County Jail. Let's take a look at this crazy story. Herb was born in the South Shore neighborhood of Chicago. He grew up on 79th Street, an area that was full of crime and violence. To keep him from getting into trouble, his mom made him go down to the local youth center after school, which is where he first linked up with Lil Bibby. They both had an interest in basketball and rap, so they formed a close relationship that still continues to this day. But growing up in a wild city like Chicago, it would take more than an after-school program to keep Herb out of trouble. In high school, he started skipping class to play basketball, and when he did show up, he was getting into constant fights. He eventually dropped out at just 16 and started getting deeper into the streets. Herb and Bibby were part of a local gang called No Limit, which is a renegade set of the Black Peace Stones. No Limit would form an alliance with the renegade set of the GDs called the Muskegon Boys and form a larger group called NLMB, which stood for No Limit, Muskegon Boys, or Never Leave My Brothers Alone. Both of these groups were renegades, which meant that they didn't follow the rules and share the same beefs as the other gangs they broke off from. Plus, they had beef with almost every other gang in the city. One of their main ops is a GD set called KTS or Kill to Survive. KTS Dre was a rapper affiliated with the gang who was from the Lakeside neighborhood. His whole family was affiliated with the GDs, including his father Vinny and his brother Lil Vinny. KTS would not only beef with NLMB, they would also beef with several BD sets as well, including O Block and 600. The beef between KTS and NLMB all started after the death of an affiliate named Paris Bassett, aka Lil Pez. Pez was killed back in March 2008 in the Grand Crossing neighborhood. He was found on the sidewalk with a bullet in his head on the 1300 block of East 72nd Street around 11 p.m. Pez was killed just two days before his mother's birthday when he was only 16 years old. His aunt later told the Chicago Tribune that Paris was a good kid, but he went down the wrong road and he got himself into something he could not get out of. She also believes his death was gang related. Paris wasn't a confirmed member of KTS, but he was from the neighborhood and many people there loved him. So his death hit hard. No one was ever arrested for the murder, but KTS believed that NLMB was responsible. So after that, it was an all out war and both KTS Dre and his brother Vaughn would start applying pressure to NLMB. At one point, Dre and Vaughn would slide into No Limit territory and press several members who were hanging out at a McDonald's. Dre would end up punching a No Limit member named Cairo in the face while recording the whole thing on video. Dre tried to get Cairo to say Rock, a dead member of NLMB. Uh, say Rock, Say Rock! Say Rock! Say Rock! But Cairo refused to back down and stood his ground the whole time. As soon as KTS Dre and his homies left the McDonald's, gunfire can be heard in the background. Now get back to the hood, man. Cairo also later confronted Dre on Instagram Live, proving that he wasn't scared. Then, in April 2010, a No Limit member named Faison Robinson was shot and killed on the 2900 block of East 79th Street. Police arrived on the scene and found Robinson dead with a gunshot wound to the back of the head. He was brought to the hospital, but later pronounced dead at just 19 years old. Faison was known by the name G. Faison and was a respected member of NLMB. G. Herbo would later name his debut mixtape, Welcome to Faison Land, after his dead homie and would shout him out often in songs. G. Faisal's death also remains unsolved, but many have credited the hit to either KTS Vaughn or Dre. The following year, KTS would strike again and take out another NLMB member named Jacoby Heron, aka Kobe. The 21-year-old was killed outside the same McDonald's on the 2400 block of East 79th Street, where Dre punched No Limit Cairo. Kobe was another well-loved member of NLMB, and his death was a major loss for the gang. In an interview with Sway in the Morning, Herb said that he was with Kobe celebrating Bibby's brother's birthday right before he got shot. He told Sway, we was together. We was outside, like 4 in the morning, on the block chilling, shooting dice, all type of stuff. He just pimped off. He was always the type to not ask someone for shit. We got five cars out there. He ain't asked for a ride. He lived a couple blocks over, just walked off, and we heard shots go off. Like a lot of shots. We go to the scene, and I see my homie dead. Herb would go on to name his third mixtape, Ballin' Like I'm Kobe, in honor of his dead friend. No one was ever arrested for Kobe's murder either, but the word on the street is that it was KTS Vaughn and Dre. The rumor would basically be confirmed after KCS Dre dropped a song in 2015 called Kill to Survive, where he can be seen rocking a jacket that says F*** your dead homie on the back, along with a bunch of dead members of NLMB, including Faso and Kobe. Not long after that, NLMB would even the score and take out KTS Vaughn for his wild disrespect. On June 23, 2015, Vaughn was standing with a group of people outside a house on Ellis Avenue, just south of 75th Street, when two men jumped out of an SUV and started shooting into the crowd. Vaughn was hit and pronounced dead at the scene, being only 21 years old. Like most murders in Chicago, Vaughn's killer was never found. But an NLMB member named Choppa would post a video online dissing Vaughn the day he died, leading many to believe that they were behind the murder. 
But before he had a chance to slide for his brother, KTS Dre would be arrested for a gun charge and would spend the next three years behind bars. Also, around that same time, G Herbo's career would really start taking off after the success of his hit track, Kill Shit with Lil Bibby. Herb and Bibby would ride the wave of Chicago Drill while establishing their own sound. So even though the beef between KTS and NLMB still continued in the streets, the beef between Herb and Dre would be put on hold while Dre was locked up and Herb was working on his music. Even after being released for the gun charge, KTS Dre would continue to get sent back to jail over the next few years for charges that included child endangerment, domestic battery, and drug possession. In April 2020, he was caught with the gun again and sent right back to Cook County Jail. Dre was at a gas station when two cops saw him and started grilling him. When they looked in his car, they saw a pistol by the driver's seat. Dre tried to get away by jumping in the car and speeding off, but the officers were eventually able to stop him and he was arrested for possession of a firearm as a convicted felon and resisting arrest. He was able to post bond, but was put on house arrest to await trial. Then, in January 2021, another NLMB member named Lil Greg would be killed in a broad daylight hit while getting his haircut at a local barbershop. Greg was inside the Studio 19 barbershop on State Street when a gunman walked in and shot him in the face, then escaped in a Volvo SUV. Greg was brought to the hospital, but later pronounced dead at just 24 years old. All of his homies' deaths hit hard for G Herbo, but Greg's was possibly the worst. The two had known each other since they were just kids, and Herbo said that Greg was like a brother to him. A man named Christopher Mosley was later arrested for the shooting. Police pulled him over in the Woodlawn neighborhood, driving a vehicle that matched the description of the getaway car. Plus, they also discovered a 40 caliber Glock on him, but he was later released due to lack of evidence. Mosley is affiliated with the Pocket Town set of the GDs, a gang with ties to KTS. KTS Dre later claimed that he had nothing to do with Lil Greg's death, but he also didn't care because he was still a knot. Dre also used Greg's death to taunt members of NLMB, often telling them on social media, go to the barbershop. I need to see the bar, so I need, I need to see my bar before I got my look up. At that point, Dre was still on house arrest for the gun charge he caught back in April. He was only allowed to leave his house for a few hours each day to run errands. Dre wasn't gonna let that stop him from going about his business, and he continued to move around Chicago. He even made a trip to Wisconsin without the permission of the court. But when authorities found out about his activities, he was arrested for violating his parole and brought back to Cook County Jail. His fiance posted his $5,000 bail, but he still had to spend the night locked up and wasn't released until the following day. As he was released, he was met by his fiance and grandmother, and together they left Cook County and headed toward their car. As they exited the jail, two cars pulled up and several shooters hopped out. They all started letting off shots, showering Dre and his family with bullets. His grandmother was hit in the knees, and an innocent bystander was also grazed in the mouth, but they both survived. Dre was shot a total of 64 times in the face and torso, and passed away almost immediately at just 31 years old. No one has been arrested for his murder, but many have claimed it was the work of NLMB getting revenge for the disrespect of Lil Greg. Their hood was allegedly shot up the same night, and it makes sense given their history. KTS Dre's death closed the chapter on one of the craziest beefs in the history of Chicago. At this point, Herb has too much to lose, and KTS just lost one of their most respected members. Herb got the upper hand with his main op gone. It's hard to tell if he'll leave the streets alone for good or get sucked back into the beef. Hopefully, he can now put the past behind him and focus on his music so he doesn't end up dead as well.